this is part two of our tour of Oscar, but we wanted to start on the outside really quick because we need to show you something. We, we forgot something that I'm not really happy about as, as an owner, but a lot of other people would be very happy about as an owner. This uh... is our dumb TV. It's an outdoor TV, which is great for tailgating and hanging out outside and watching TV, which are two things we have not we done yet. Do we haven't really done yet. We may do some tailgating. We don't know when, but in the meantime, we just have our third TV outside, and it's pretty. We literally useful. use it so rarely that we forgot to we show forgot it to you about in the last it. video. <laughs> so let's go ahead and go inside and check out Oscar on the inside. Let's do it. So this is what Oscar looks like with his slides in. And this is what he looks like with his slides out, which is a huge difference when you live in an eight and a half foot box one way. Now he's not so small. So the first thing you see when you come in are these electrical switches here. We have the awning controls, aisle and porch lights. This is the aisle light, porch lights on the outside. Uh, this is the living room lights, which are behind you. The step control, which basically controls the motor that brings the step in and out. And then this bin, this switch here is for the cargo lights, which is those bins that we just toured outside. Some of those have lights in them, and you can control them all from a master switch right here. This is a battery disconnect. However, we found it doesn't really work as you would expect. It doesn't kill everything. It leaves things like the refrigerator on. So if you really want to disconnect the batteries, those switches and the bins outside, that's the real way to do that. This is sort of a sort of kind of winterize your thing. Uh, we typically don't use it if we want to disconnect the batteries, we just use the real switches. Obviously above the door, we have the thin bin, small storage area there. Over here, we have our fancy couch. Uh, underneath here is also the cat lounge area, which we'll show you in a second. Uh, we basically, they like to hide under there to stay away from Jet, and we're more than happy to accommodate them in that. Uh, up top, we have some storage bins. Most of these are used for filming gear. And even more stuff. Our fancy podcast microphone. And then this bin is the electronics bin. This is kind of a work in progress right now. Um, eventually, I would like to mount this wireless router and have some something fancier than just stacking everything on top of each other. But this basically repeats a wireless internet signal and creates a little mini network inside of here. I'll go into further detail about that in another video. This down here is the TV controller, which lets you distribute antenna and satellite signals and all that to the different TVs that are on the unit. Uh, we basically use it to broadcast the just the antenna because we have a Blu-ray player hooked up, which we'll get to. And then also in here are controls for the satellite dish, which is on the roof. And then there are also controls for this fancy fold-down bed. cameras in them on both sides and then there's a rear facing camera and this whole complex works all of that stuff that's pretty good the th nice thing is we have weather band in here so we can listen to weather tom so he can tell us what's going on otherwise there really isn't much else to say about the front end but this is where i hang out most of the time oh and these fans are really loud we almost never use them but they're very very loud usually we only hit them when trying to access the engine brake because right there. down here, the switch right above the engine brake is for the stupid fans. 
We have a giant nightshade. Uh, it's also able to be used when we are driving, but it cannot go all the way down. It probably stops right about there when we're moving, but it will go all the way down. It is motorized. We also have shades on either side, but those are handheld shades and I can't really reach them from my seat because I like to sit on the floor. So I'm usually asking Steve to fix that for me. Otherwise, Even I can barely reach them when I'm driving. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, there are four cup holders, two for each, which is lovely. They hold water bottles, they hold coffee mugs. I love it. They're really nice and big. Um, and there's plenty of room underneath for feet. The air conditioning is comfortable up here. And these seats do swivel. We don't use them very often, so I don't know how to demo it because I don't remember how they work. I actually completely forgot that they could swivel. <laughs> they do. They spin all the way around. Right. There's supposed to be a table here, but we took this a mount that goes right here, which is why there's all the holes in the floor. But we took the mount out because we don't use the table. Mostly because it's just... For us, it's useless. We don't right. use this area. This is the cat bed. So. Slash guest bed. Slash guest bed. So let's go ahead and move on into the dining area. Slash office area. As you can see, I still have my laptop here because I was working earlier today. Obviously, we have television, speakers, a little cable run down there to the table itself. Underneath them, we've done a bunch of custom wiring, which we'll go into detail in another video on. I have all the power adapters for laptops. I mounted a Blu-ray player right here in the front so that we can do HDMI to the television because the regular distribution system only does RCA connectors and for anyone who's nerdy enough you know that's actually not high definition. Also mounting it here was probably the most convenient place because the tray comes out here and when we, I tried putting it vertically to have it underneath the television and the disc kept falling out so we decided okay let's keep it flat like it wants to be and we'll just tuck it underneath the table so it's great. So yeah, this is sort of our eating slash workspace. Uh, usually I'm here most of the time because I have a regular job. And whenever Allie's editing, she's here as well. So now we move on to the kitchen, which looks like it's a pretty decent size, right? I think it's great. Big countertops, sprawling cabinets, all the lovely things. Uh, we do have a nice outlet here. There's some light switches to do lights. This is a convection microwave slash oven thing. It works pretty good. Uh, most of the time that we want to use it that isn't microwave, so if we're doing the oven, we have to run the generator just because it eats up a lot of power. There's a secret cabinet in here that we discovered, which is great, because this is where we keep all of our plates and things. Um, these cabinets are super deep. Let me go ahead and put my secret cabinet back. But these hold quite a bit as well, so there's a lot of stuff in here. Uh, we have four drawers, uh, well three really because this one's not a drawer and I always forget that. <laughs> These are also very deep and they come all the way out and they are organized which is lovely. This cabinet has two separate doors so that you can access it from either side and we keep all of our bags and, and cleaning supplies and some extra cat food down there. Um, the stove is under here, I'll show it to you in a second but we'll go over the drawers first. Again, another very deep, deep, long drawer is great so all of our pots and pans are in this one. The one underneath needed two hooks so we added an extra hook. It holds a lot of glassware such as our bowls, our cups, some Pyrex, Baltimore Ravens mug, those kind of things. So then let's go ahead and open up the countertops. So the sink hides underneath. It is a double so there are two sides to it which is lovely. They stick really nice, they don't vibrate, they don't make any noise, it's awesome. It's a full acrylic countertop, it matches the table. And then you have a three burner stove hiding underneath, which is also lovely. It needs to be cleaned a little bit. But those are things that you figure out as you're filming. So, again, nothing really slides, everything is very tight fitting, but yet it fits in very nicely, you don't have to fight it. Um, we actually purchased a couple little things for space saving. This is really nice because it can collapse. So if we did need to put it away, which we usually don't, it can go in there. Very nicely in one of the drawers down bottom. So that is pretty much the kitchen. So then we can go ahead and talk about the refrigerator. So it was just unhook, and then the fridge opens. We try to put glass bottles on the door so that they don't tend to fall out. Um, if we have bottles on the shelves, they will fall down onto other shelves. So we've tried to put all that stuff, it's heavy on the bottom and then smaller items up top. So that worked out pretty well for us. And especially having the glass on the door, we haven't had any breakage from the refrigerator since then, which is fantastic. So the refrigerator side, the freezer side. There is an ice maker in here, although we haven't used it because space is at a premium, so we just try to keep everything there. So next up, we have all of our main electronic controls. 
This up here is the magnum energy panel. This is what controls the inverter that you saw outside. So right now it says inverting. Oh, and the AGS has just kicked on the generator. Fantastic. So one of the questions we had in the comments for the last video was how loud the generator is when it's running. So we wanted to demonstrate that. This is the view from inside the RV. Currently one of the windows is open. This is the sound with the window closed. About the same. And so this is what the bedroom sounds like with the generator off. And then now you can hear what the bedroom sounds like with the generator on. So even though we're still running it, it's attached to our vehicle, it's pretty quiet back here. Here's the noise level outside with the generator off. Now you can hear the generator on. So that can be set up to run it in a variety of schedules. You can set it up based on quiet hours or if you're at a campground that doesn't allow you to run it at certain hours. Uh, we basically just have it on the basic AGS right now, which starts the generator when it needs to be run, charges the batteries, and then shuts it down. Below that is our electrical panel that does the water tanks, the battery, the propane. This is the control for the water pump, on off. These are the two slide out controls, so basically in and out to move the slides. And then these you basically push and say, okay, how full is our gray water tank? Okay, it's one third. The black currently says it's full, even though it's not. We have had a bit of an issue with sensors there where it gets like weird cloggings and that kind of stuff. So we bought sensor cleaner, which worked for approximately one day. And then it went back to saying that it was full again. So we basically just empty it every time we dump and just keep track of, you know, how long has it been? Uh, fresh water tank, currently full batteries. When, when the generator is running, the batteries always say full, but if it wasn't running, you could actually get an accurate level there. And then the LPG, obviously, that's our propane level. Down here is the controller for the climate control. So this is there's two zones to this, which is what the zone button does. So the front of the RV is zone one, the bedroom is zone two, and then you can run the furnace in here as well as the air conditioning. Uh, generator has to be on when you're running the air conditioning, but the heat will work without it. And then these down here are just regular light switches that control the living room and the kitchen lights. This thermostat, we're not entirely sure what it does. Uh, it doesn't matter how high you set it or how low you set it, nothing really ever changes. If you want to run the heat, you run the heat through here anyway. So this may have been for a prior system or it could even just be future expansion. We're not 100% sure. I didn't see a book on that. We have not done anything with. It's just a toilet surprise. We put a new floor mat down. We have a trash can, big surprise, toilet cleaning brush. Um, we did hang art, which is different and lovely. There used to be art here. We took it down. <laughs> um, we have a towel hanger, which is a little bit big for the space, but because of the way that the towels hang on it, it actually works really well. Um, we have the shower itself. The door kind of curves in. Do you have a regular shower? We have replaced the water nozzle, so it's actually a little bit longer than the one that was here. And at some point we'll have to put like some sort of a water retarder on it so that it slows down. It's like an aerator, it really is what it is. Um, you can also see that there's like a, a line that goes around the bathroom. We're going to get some hooks and that's going to turn into a bathing suit line so you can hang your swimsuits up in the shower and not dry them, you know, in the bathroom so it drips all over the toilet. Um, there's a skylight. It's pretty neat because no matter what, the shower always has light, <laughs> unless it's really dark. Um, and then you have the actual vanity area. We have one sink. Everything in the cabinet stays on the cab, like it stays here. We have a very small little drawer. We have a tiny little cabinet where all of the bags, the toilet paper, and some more cleaning supplies go. And then we have this massive, massive cabinet that we did not open before we started filming. So of course some stuff has moved. There's a little bit of shift. It happens, especially when you're moving. But this cabinet is very large. And we actually have an entirely fully stocked bathroom and a first aid kit and all kinds of stuff in here. So I'm really happy with our bathroom because it, we didn't really have to do a ton. We rehung the, the shower nozzle and then we hung the new line. And that's about it. Otherwise we haven't really touched much in here, which is great. 
So let's go ahead and move to the cabinets behind us where we have done a lot of work. All right, so in this closet, which is held shut by this nice little elastic cord, because these doors tend to vibrate a little bit when we're driving. So you unlock that. This is where we have sweatshirts, coats, vacuum cleaner stores very nicely here. The ladder you saw earlier for the bed goes nicely in there. Over here we have laundry, dryers on top, washers on the bottom. We have had to modify this slightly, which we'll get into in the podcast that just came out uh, this weekend. This board basically is new and prevents the exact problem that we had. You'll have to listen to the podcast to hear just what it is. It's a fantastic story. That's bad. Over here on the right then, we have turned this into a pantry. So we have three shelves. These two were original, but they were a little bit lower. And then we built this third one to match. And then down at the bottom, we have the cat box area. And then to support this cat box, obviously you'll notice that this panel has been replaced with a custom made cat door. Uh, we basically measured the diameter of the cats and we also measured the diameter of Jet. And we came up with a size that we thought would permit the cats, but deny the dog. That has actually worked out really, really well. So Bye, Jet. Jet. Jet, if allowed, will stick his nose in the cat box and, and dine on things, which is disgusting, but either way. So this door was designed intentionally to keep him out of there and does a great job of it. Um, and now we're in the bedroom, which is in the back, and we probably won't talk too much about this, but I wanted to show you the cool door, because this whole door goes all the way over. There's two pieces, one, two. We'll go all the way over. We have a TV, which is lovely. It uh, has a Chromecast already in it, which is also very nice. We have one closet, which we have modified. We moved, we made another shelf, really. So that there was a shelf in here and it's still here, but I didn't want to have to continue to unbury my shoes when I wanted to get to shoes. So there's one closet. Um, these are also both very deep and they have quite a bit in them, which is lovely. Um, and then we have a dresser that has six drawers. So all of our clothing is kept in this dresser. These come all the way out, which is lovely. This is our slide. So the whole thing moves up against the bed. Um, we have a little bit of silicon on the bottom of these things so they don't really move, which is nice. Again, another cabinet. This one is my side. There's a light switch underneath. Ta-da! And then these also have individual lights, which is very nice. Um, here's another closet. These cabinets are also super deep, the entire length all the way back. So we keep some things like paper, which is about to fall out, <laughs> in here. There's a, a small laser printer that we have in here. Um, my sewing machine is in here. That kind of stuff, you know, things that you eventually will get to every now and then. We use the printer way more than we thought we would, I think. And then you have Steve's side. He doesn't have a cabinet like I do because the turbo fan is under there. But yeah, this is, this is the bedroom. So I think that about does our tour. So that's our tour of Oscar. We're all done. If there's anything we didn't talk about enough, or if you have questions, feel free to ask us in the comments and we'll be happy to get to it. Uh, mm -hmm. The whole section about how loud the generator is, that was straight from one of you who asked. So thank you to whoever that was. So that's it guys, we're, we're all done. Again, if you want us to go in depth, leave some commentary and we may end up doing a video about it, or at least putting it in a video. Yeah, we'll right? get, we're gonna do a all commentary answering special at some point, so. He needs to pull commentary. Don't forget to subscribe, and we put out new videos every week, so make sure you check back for those. And I guess we'll see you guys in about a week. In a week? Yep. In a week. Awesome. So we'll see you guys later. All right, bye. Okay, bye.